reaches the final stage in the birth of a motion picture print. It has been printed, processed, and is now being dried. As it comes out of the dry cabinet, a solution of wax is applied. This new print is then visually checked for scratches, abrasions, or any defects. The result, a print that is as good as a modern laboratory can make. Clean, sharp, good color, good sound. Now that's how a print should look. And that's the way it does look when it comes out of a lab. The question is, how will it look a few weeks from now? In this projector is the print you've just seen. In this other projector is a print of the same show, processed by the same laboratory, and given the same careful inspection. The only difference is this second print has been in the field for 30 days. During that time, it has been projected eight or 10 times. Let's look at them side by side. It's pretty obvious that prints take quite a beating after they leave the lab. I want to suggest to you some ways to prevent damage and increase the life of prints by proper handling. Let's take it step by step. We know that when a print comes out of the drying cabinet, it is immediately waxed. This wax or lubricant is applied to protect against projector scratches or abrasion. If you were to project an unlubricated print, it might have a tendency to stick in the gate, causing jitter. <laughs> Important anywhere, I guess. Excessive sticking will cause tiny emulsion particles to pile up in the gate. This results in scratches. Severe sticking may also cause perforation damage. The film might tear or lose a loop and run off the sprockets, which can mean crimps, creases, splits, tears, and all sorts of similar disasters. One other thing. Emulsion buildup can be a very subtle thing. A gradual buildup in the projector gate area over a period of time will attract dirt, like this, which when dragged against the film results in abrasion. So the laboratory lubricates the print to prevent all these things from happening. But projector maintenance is also important. More about that later. Right now, let's go to the inspection department. Inspectors working in a clean room with filtered air give each print a visual inspection to be sure there are no defects or scratches. When they are satisfied, the print is good. It is wound on a core labeled and sent to the shipping department. The print is then inserted in a plastic bag, packaged and prepared for shipment. Next stop, the film distributor. This is the first danger area for our virgin print. Realizing this and knowing that their library represents a tremendous investment, the smart distributor sets aside a special room to be used exclusively for film handling. It is closed off, ventilated with clean filtered air, and kept spotlessly clean. The print is generally received from the lab on a core. It is given a quick inspection as it is wound onto a reel. Notice the uncluttered table, the clean white gloves worn by the operator how he carefully handles the film by the edges, how his work light is adjusted to reflect on the surface of the film, how he winds at a slow, steady speed onto a new, unbent reel, which is free of birds, and how he is careful not to drag film across the side of the reel. Contrast a work table kept like this to one allowed to become a junk pile like this. Contrast the operator who wears clean white gloves 
and is always careful to handle film by the edges to one who will do this. Contrast this kind of rewinding to this abusive treatment and decide who you would rather have handling your print. All right, our print has been inspected, wound onto a reel, and is now ready for shipment. But let's leave it here for the moment and take a look around the distributor's place at some of the prints that have been to the second danger area, in the field, and see what happens or has happened to them. Incoming prints from the field are first measured with a counter. This is safe if the operator doesn't pull it through too fast. As the print is being measured, it is held so light will reflect off the surface and reveal any scratches or abrasions. Splices are checked to be sure they are well made and to be sure that no tape has been used which would stick in the projector. Prints with damaged perforations must be taken out of circulation and await replacement sections from the laboratory. The inspector checks for commercials or spot announcements that may have been left in by a television station. If any are discovered, they are removed from the print. The inspector also checks for cue marks. Standard cue marks are necessary for the projectionist. But all too often, improper cue marks are discovered which can ruin a print. The Abercrombie. Ready when you are, sir. Prepare the contract. And always, of course, the careful inspector wears clean white gloves. Gloves pick up dirt particles and running film over the cloth is like running it over sandpaper. Scratches mar a print, and as dirt becomes embedded, the print becomes worthless. Cleanliness is the number one rule in all phases of film handling. And finally, the film is cleaned with a solution which cleans and lubricates at the same time. A print treated like this will arrive for its next showing in good condition. But let's pick up our original print and follow it to the third danger area, the TV station. Modern TV stations strive to provide the same clean, air-conditioned film handling rooms as the distributors. The film director first times the print, inspecting it as he does so. Commercials are inserted at the desired intervals. Here, proper splicing is a must, not only to protect the print, but to ensure good projection. First, the film is carefully positioned on the guide pins of the splicer. Next, the emulsion is removed with smooth, even strokes, taking care not to cut down into the base. Then, fresh film cement is applied, using just enough to ensure a good bond, but not so much that it overflows into the picture area. The splicer is then closed, and the bond allowed to dry for 10 to 15 seconds. A good practice is to use a fresh bottle of cement every day. Always replace cap and secure tightly after each use. Each splice is inspected to be sure it is well made. When the emulsion is properly removed, when fresh cement is used, and when the splicer is properly adjusted, the splice will be as strong as the film itself. It is never necessary to back up a splice with tape. This will only cause it to jam in the projector gate. Now, if it needs it, the film is cleaned and lubricated before the final rewind. Strangely enough, one of the big danger periods for any print occurs when it is being rewound. Misaligned rewinds will cause the film to drag over the edge of the reel, resulting in deep scratches. Perfectly aligned rewinds and new unbent reels prevent this. Another brutal treatment of film occurs when it is rewound with an uneven or jerky motion. You not only don't get a snug roll, you get scratches as well. 
when film is too loose on the reel, there is the temptation to pull on the end to tighten it. This causes cinch marks, which look like this. A slow, steady speed while rewinding, keeping a slight pressure on the reels, will make for a snug roll and will prevent scratches and cinch marks. The fourth big danger area for our print is the projection room. First, of course, the projector should be in good condition and kept clean. The lens should be removed and cleaned frequently. The pressure plate should be removed, inspected, and cleaned as needed. The aperture should be inspected and kept free of dirt. And of course, the experienced projectionist keeps a supply of extra projector and exciter lamps on hand for instant replacement in case of failure. Threading a projector is simple, provided a few precautions are taken, such as sprockets engaging print perforations properly. All manufacturers provide recommendations for forming the loop. The film must be properly aligned in the rails before closing the gate. The film must fit snugly over the sound drum to prevent distortion or flutter. The lower loop is formed and the perforations properly seated in the sprockets of the remaining rollers. The take-up reel can cause film damage if it is bent or lopsided. Before starting, advance the projector manually to check for proper film threading. Whenever possible, it is good practice to pre-project a portion of the film before your audience arrives. This will permit adjustment of the tone and volume and the focusing of the sound and picture. When these steps are followed, your screening will look and sound like this. Ignore them, and you may get this. Or this. Or this. Remember, projectors do not damage film. It is their misuse and lack of proper maintenance that damage film. So these are the danger areas in print handling. But by following a few simple rules and exercising a little caution, whether in the laboratory, the distribution center, in the field, at the station or in the projection room. The life of any print can be increased from days to many months.